Lady Ledal and Make Connect TV and I'm here with uh, Coach John Cavanagh at the book launch in Easton's on O'Connor Street in Dublin for Winner Learn. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad I'm glad more than one person showed up. Yeah. I thought it might just be my parents, but <laughs> there's a bit of a gang, so uh, no, I'm really happy. Turnout. I'm really happy, really yeah. yeah, yeah I was, you, you never know how these things are going to go. So. Is this, your, this is obviously your first time doing a book signing, is it? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other well, five books. Yeah, that are no, right. but you could have done one during the week. No, yeah, no, 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 first one, one, first one. What was the kind of feedback? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's all positive, you know, everybody, uh, a lot of people had already read half of it and they seem yeah. to enjoy the story. Um, yeah, a lot of people just wishing us luck for the future. But yeah. it was, it was a lot nice. of MMA fans or people who are training or a bit of a yeah, mix? It was a bit, a bit of a mix, yeah. There's a lot of guys from different gyms around the country uh, made the trip down, so we really appreciate them making the effort. Um, and then just people that enjoy watching it and enjoy hearing about the story behind the scenes. Absolutely. So, you're, I mean, this is amazing, you know, like uh, fantastic. It's very weird. Here. It's very weird. Is, is it weird? Be in Easton signing books. It's yeah. a strange yeah. feeling. Um, I'm kind of uh, proud of it. Yeah. But it definitely feels weird when I was starting in a, in a shed a couple of years ago and just scrapping and rolling around trying to squeeze people's heads, yeah. not knowing what we're doing. And then I blink and I'm wearing a shirt signing books. So yeah. it's it's a weird uh, feeling. Was it weird actually putting it? Because I know that Paul is here as well. You put it, the, yeah. the book is done yourself and Paul Donnelly. Mm -hmm. um, what was the kind of process? You know, Did you just have a conversation where you're like, we should put a pen to paper? or? What yeah, happens? so I, I write for uh, 42 the 42.ie and Paul writes the article so they, what we usually do is he comes in and we just have like an hour long conversation in the office and then he makes that into an article and it was going very well always got a lot of hits <coughs> and then he came to me the idea that he's been speaking to Penguin and they were very interested in doing, mm -hmm. a, doing a book I thought it was a bit early but um, he said no there's, there's enough after happening so far and then who knows maybe there's a second one when it's all said and done well, uh, we just sat down. It took us about four or five months, and um, I don't really spend all that much time thinking about what's happened. I'm mm -hmm. usually there's usually a fight coming up, so I'm just getting ready for that. And once that fight's over, I quickly let go of it because I'm getting ready for the next one. Yeah. So it was actually kind of nice to sit back and mm -hmm. uh, be forced yeah. to think about where we've come from and think about some of the old stories. So. Uh, and a new yeah. role for you as well. Obviously, this is not something that you're used. You know, used to being the coach. Yeah. So what was that like? You know, kind of sitting down having those conversations and looking back do you get to appreciate kind of you know how far the journey has come so far yeah that, that's that's why I enjoyed it after a while but when I started to write the stories down and, and remember them and, and think about it and it is a bit crazy where we've come from in a relatively short period of time mm -hmm. um, yeah and I, I hope some if some people read this book and maybe they don't even train but they're they're trying to get their own little business going or something and to get, get a little bit of, maybe to get a small bit of inspiration for that. So Absolutely. That was something I was going to add, ask you was, did you have um, a reader in mind when you were putting it together? Yeah, kind of two. Like one, you know, I did want to put as many kind of behind the scenes MMA stories in there. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want people that are fans of the sport to feel to get their money's worth to get some interesting and some funny, some sad stories. Um, but also I wanted it really to get across what my philosophy, or my philosophy yeah. in life is win or learn that we... I don't, I've tried to create a, a gym environment where people are not afraid to fail, that if they're learning jiu-jitsu, they're not afraid to get tapped out, or if they're learning MMA, they're not afraid to lose a fight, because you understand that that loss is an absolutely necessary step on the way to becoming successful. Mm -hmm. no, one, no one's success graph is linear. It's, it's jagged. It's up and down. And too many people, when they're trying to do something, maybe start a new business or, or whatever, and on the first pitfall, they say, oh, I guess I'm not good enough. It's not for me. And that's, it's nonsense, really what it's about is most of your wins you have, have a lot of luck in it. So I don't, I'm not too interested in people's wins, but everyone's loss, it's depending on what you do with it. Some people take a loss and it really knocks them out and they're done. And some people take a loss and turn it around and sit back after and kind of think about it and say, what did I do wrong? What could I do better? Who should I be listening to? Where can I learn? How can I move on? And it's those people that want to become successful. So I want to just let them know that I certainly had plenty of losses on the way, both in business and, and, and in sport. And I've, all my guys I've coached have all had losses. Um, but they keep getting back up, they keep going forward, and they learn. Absolutely. And with the winner learn concept, that's something that if you do martial arts, you hear that quite a bit. You know, it's a, there's no loss in martial arts. Um, is that something that you think, you know, do you attribute that mindset to martial arts, or is it just you as a person? Um, it, definitely people who come from sport are used to that they're used to knowing 
that you are going to have losses on the way. Yeah. Um, I think if you play weekly sports, if you do uh, football or, or something like that, you're playing every Saturday, you lose some, you win some, it's, it becomes acceptable. Mm -hmm. But I think if you do martial arts, especially if you're a professional fighter and you maybe you're only competing twice a year or three times a year, there's a big build-up towards that. There's a lot more weight put on a contest than there is playing you know, a weekly game of football. Mm -hmm. um, so that alone, that kind of fear of failure, sadly stops a lot of people from even trying so that you might experience the joy of winning. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I, I think I got it from martial arts, but maybe it was a little bit of me as well. And when I, when I was trying to get certain businesses going and they were collapsing, um, I didn't just kind of, well actually I did, there's just some stories in the book about curling up in the ball and crying, but, <laughs> but once the tears were over, I stood back up and I said, okay, well. One lone Chuck Norris here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more like bawling and sniffling like a baby, but um, they're okay as well. You can, you can have those days, but you got you got to pick yourself up and, and, and start moving forward again. So that's, that's what I wanted to kind of get across in this. Awesome. Um, before I let you go, we had, uh, obviously we saw your parents who queued up to get your book signed and we interviewed them as well you know and overall the team is that they're like super proud of you you know and um, what is it like for you you know now that you see you obviously the, the journey that you've been on th with the book being launched getting them to come in and, and uh, having them just see the environment that you're in at the moment what's that like for you yeah you know it's is it uh, kind of like i told you <laughs> <laughs> definitely a bit of that definitely a bit of that i told you so um I can I can certainly see where my parents were coming from all those years ago, trying to trying to talk me out of it. You know, I guess it's a bit like someone coming to you and saying, you know, you want to be a, a football player. So yeah. it's such a small percentage will actually make it. So I suppose it's the parent's job to somewhat err on the side of probability and, and try to get you into a, a regular sort of job if you, if you want to put it that way. Um, but they've been they've been great supporters mm -hmm. um, be, overall, even though they would try and talk me out of it. But when it came to me having to get a big loan to try and keep the business going, my dad put his house on the line to sign for that. So you're not going to do that unless you have some, yeah. don't like using the word faith, but unless you have a little bit of faith in somebody. I believe it's evidence-based that they saw my passion for this and they saw how hard I worked at it. So they took a risk, a calculated risk, and helped me out. Um, I paid it all back, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, they, they've been by my side the whole time. and it's, uh, they, My parents are very important to me. It's I like uh, We have a little Sunday ritual, meet my, meet my dad for a point, and him and my girlfriend talk about football and me and my mother <laughs> <laughs> talk about whatever. <laughs> I know nothing about football. But, um, but obviously you can appreciate the football at the moment uh, and the, you know, the success of the lads. You know, I, I watch, watching, them, watching them play there the other night, I couldn't help but like, start getting into it. And yeah. I live in an apartment complex and it was so funny because when you heard the goal, when, when the goal was scored, you could hear the whole complex. Like, no. So it's, it's great. Like, I, lo I, love, I love events like that that mm -hmm. kind of bring us together, ties yeah. together. And, uh, and we saw a similar kind of events like that with Connor, you know, when he took the belt as well. It's that kind of like Irish camaraderie where we all kind of it's just incredible. support incredible. Everybody each other. stands a bit taller. Everybody feels a bit prouder. <coughs> That's one of my favorite messages to get is actually somebody is living in Sydney for the last 10 years. And he messaged me to say, like, they feel even prouder of the Irish heritage now when they're yeah. walking around. They wear their, their Irish jersey and people yeah. are like, oh, you're, you're from Ireland. Like, you know. Yeah stand a bit taller like we've it's, I mean the last 10 years in sport in general has been pretty incredible with like the rugby team how they're doing now we're into the, the Euros knockout stage and obviously in, in mixed martial arts we're doing fantastic and the boxers doing amazing it just seems we're all on this this kind of rise we're a small little country a couple million people and, and we're we're world beaters absolutely absolutely well what a great note to leave our interview on John thank you very much appreciate very much. it nice and best you. of luck with the, the book it was great thank to be you. here and thank you for having us as always yeah, yeah. John Gavin thank you